Thank you, frame 14. John Higgins to break. Yeah, this final at the moment, John, is being played out like the two semi-finals. Usually have a session in a match where someone runs away with it and maybe wins 6-2 or something like that. We've not seen that in either of the semi-finals. Mark Williams looked as though he could have done that in the early stages of this match, but was able to push on that advantage. Yeah, I think in this case, I think with this, these two together, I think they're just too clever. I think they're too clever for, even when they start losing a few frames, they know to scrap the way in and win another one and stop. You know, you don't see them losing five or six frames on the spin because they're just too good at match play. I think that's simply it in a nutshell. Now, Mark Williams will be tempted by this red in the middle, I'm pretty sure. Far from easy, but Ken mentioned before in the studio, he's one of the best players he's seen, I think, in the middle pocket. Doesn't lessen the pressure, though, if he does decide to go for the middle. He could play it to the far left corner and maybe feel as though he wouldn't leave anything too easy, but if he plays it in the middle and misses it, he's going to leave a sitter for his opponent. You know, I think one of the reasons why he's a little reticent, John, with the blue being knocked off its spot a touch. I think if the blue was there, he, he, he'd probably feel as if just playing this natural weight would take it up towards the blue. I think would have been slightly off its spot. He's got to hit it a bit firmer. Unbelievable shot. And he obviously well, thinks the pins were popped. But that was a brave shot to play. Look what he was leaving. And the pink does go. Yeah, that's ultimately why I think he chose the shot. I think if he was having to play up with any pace more than that higher up the table, he wouldn't have taken that. But because the pink did go, he decided to go. Oh, what a great shot. Seven. Pink spot not available. Goes up on the blue spot. That won't bother Mark at the moment. Eight. A little bit straight, but I think he's just got enough angle to be able to nicely come on one of those reds in the other half of the table. <coughs> yeah, a little trace the left hand side. Now there is a red at the bottom of the cluster that will go, and the reason I mentioned 40. that, some players rather than go into the pack and play the cannon. Fifty would rather play on the red that's loose, just leave himself a half-ball pot, and in potting that, bring other reds into play. We'll see how he wants to play it. Straight into him. Oh, well, would you believe it? Oh, okay, he catch it full in the face. John Higgins, but six. once again, when he's gone into him, previous frame, he knocked the pink in when he didn't catch it, and this time, not catching him Set full, down, he's Thank off. you. I don't question the choice of shot, but he had an alternative to play, but that is unlucky. Obviously no problem with being able to pot this red that's there. John's just having a look to see if he can pot it. That's why, and avoid the cannon on the, any of the reds as he comes down the table. Can't really screw this red in, so it's just, well, he may be able to get something out of it. He's just, I wonder if he can screw past the other side and get a gap. Which is what he's done, although he didn't get the gap. And now, One. well, he stuck a red over the corner. He may be forced into this black, John. Yeah, and if that red had just been slightly away from the cushion, it'd have made this pocket feel a lot bigger, but it's not. So there's a lot of pressure on this shot, tight under the cushion. Absolutely brilliant. As John rightly said, 
Uh, that Eight. wasn't close enough to the pocket to make it a big hole. So there was plenty of pressure on that one. Just looking at John's body language, he's obviously had to give 100% concentration to potting the black, but he's not landed good on the red. Just a puff of the cheeks told me that he's left with another slightly difficult shot. Yep. Going across the table, slightly hitting down. Very easy to flick a bit of side on these. Need good cueing. Nine. Well, it was good queuing. Now, John had a good look at this before. It must be pretty tight because he didn't just get down straight away. I mean, from our angle, it looks like it flies in, but where John is, it might be a touch tighter looking at it. It's one of those, if you're straight behind it and you've got the view of the object ball and the cue ball and the pocket 50. in line, you'd never miss it. But as John said, it was tricky. Now, what a chance. 60. To draw level and after being 4 0 down, 5 1 behind, this would be some achievement from John Higgins. Is he on this red to the corner? 23. Mm, it's pretty tight. So maybe not. Might be change of plan. Obviously you can pot this one that's close to the left corner pockets, but a little bit of work to do with the cue ball. Well, it was nice to get through the gap, but he knew he was going to be slightly hampered with the next shot. Just had to stand for it. Yeah, this is tough. And all you can do in this situation, you can't try to do much with the cue ball. Just pot the pink and just trust to look you get the right cannon. It's flicked in off the red. He's OK. A horrible split second. He thought he'd missed that. 30. Such was the wafer thin contact. 31. Flicked the pink in the pocket. <coughs> and these are lovely now. Yes, and that red near the left corner is a lot easier than it was when it was tight against the cushion. Thirty-eight. Another 39. twenty-four points needed in this situation. So basically, we're looking at this black, two more reds, and he'll have leveled the match. really is made of stern stuff as John Higgins. I've been 46. saying it for years and years and years, both playing him and being in the commentary box and in the studio. Match after match, he just seems 47. to find it from somewhere. Brilliant competitor. time decided to play for that red which had to say was difficult before but when he potted the ping and it flicked it away from 54. the cushion it may give him a nice angle for it red color red needed 55 this red to go 54 points in front 62 
with just 51 remaining. 63. He disappointed, I think, particularly with his long game today. And well, you know, okay, a couple of times he may feel he was unlucky when he went into the cluster. And this, on this occasion, he went in off. Another occasion, he knocked the pink in. Right, going right back to the start of this break, John. What a black that was from John Higgins from the jaws of the pocket. Seventy-five. Absolutely wonderful cutback. Lots of pressure on it. 76. Floated in the hole. And everything he got he deserves after that shot. And he's got his shooting boots on, John. I mentioned earlier, he needs to just step it up a touch. Well, he certainly has been doing. And this has been mightily impressive. Yeah, and it'll be interesting to see what the response is from Mark 82. Williams here. We've said that he's long potting just slightly off. How will he respond? Because John Higgins at the moment has got eyes only for another century. Mark Williams has made 10 centuries in the tournament. If John Higgins can make one here, then he'll equal that. 83. And it'll be the 81st of the tournament. Of course, it's John Higgins who holds the record for century breaks made in the World Championship, 14. 90. And the thing is about him, John, 92. once he gets on this roll, he can reel off big breaks one after the other, no problem. 95. Ninety-nine. Just this blue for another fabulous centre. Well played, John. One hundred and four. Absolutely wonderful. Hundred and ten. He's really starting to hit it good now. That's for sure. It's there. Absolutely wonderful from Jack Higgins. Another century, break of 117. 117 in the frame. Not last. John He's Higgins. clawed it back. It's 7 all.